Hello everyone, it is me, your Ukrainian teacher Olya here. Thank you so much for visiting my channel once again. In this video, we are going to practice to check your knowledge on all Ukrainian cases. Okay, so that's strictly a practical uh, video if you want to know theory, if you are... Uh, haven't seen my videos on cases yet then i strongly recommend you to do that and because i don't want to make any uh, long intros today i would like to take a moment traditionally to thank all my patrons the people who are supporting my channel so yeah thank you so much you can see the names of some of these uh, people on your screen and yeah i want them to know that their support is truly appreciated so yeah if you enjoy my content and would like me to do more if you would like to just support my channel you can do that i will leave the link to my patreon down below as well as somewhere here for you to easily find and also with my patrons i am sharing the materials that i'm using in my videos that i've been using in my videos for quite a while so yeah if you are going to be interested in downloading this particular presentation or other ones you are welcome to become my patron they are available for all patrons and now we can finally start learning so what are we going to do what is our assignment for this video we are going to i'm going to give you a sentence uh, but they aren't necessarily completely correct some of the words are going to be in brackets so you need to take those words in brackets and put them into a correct case and that is going to be our assignment easy peasy right uh, so yeah for the first sentence is dai svetlana ruka dai svetlana ruka means give a hand to svetlana give svetlana a hand right uh, so yeah, let us let us do that. Let us do some grammatical magic to this sentence and write it in a correct way and, and not what I did here with brackets. Are you ready to hear the answer? If if no, just press the pause button and take as much as you as much over time as you need. And I'm going to show the correct answer right now. And, try, and we will try to figure out why did we need to use the case that we used. So uh, the sentence, the correct sentence is Dai Svitlani Ruku. Dai Svitlani Ruku. Okay, so Dai Komu Svitlani. We used the feminine name Svitlana in dative case because it is an indirect object of the verb Dai, give, right? Give to whom? To Svetlana, dative case. But give what? A hand. A direct object is a hand. So and a di direct object of the uh, verb uh, dai should go in um, accusative case, in znahidny vitminok, right? So we will have dai svetlani ruku, and that is the correct way to put this sentence. So yeah, if you said Dai Svitlani Ruku, you were correct and you scored one point. And then let me know in the comments down below if, if you did this um, exercise with me, how many of the sentences you did right. Another instance. Rozkaži meni kaska, buď laska. Rozkaži meni kaska, buď laska. So, rozkaži mi means tell me, kaska means a fairy tale, mudlaska means please. So, tell me a fairy tale, please. So, which case would we choose for the uh, word for the noun kaska, a singular feminine noun? I am given the correct answer. It is, rozkaži mi kasku, budlaska. Again, same, same situation. So, rozkaži mi šo, tell me what. A direct object, and therefore, accusative case, kaska became kasku. We put it in accusative case as a direct object of the verb rozkaži. Moving on to the next one. Pokaži meni svoja nova suknia. Now, this instance is going to be a bit more complicated because we have a whole combination of a uh, possessive pronoun an adjective and a feminine singular adjective and a feminine singular noun and they all should go in one case 
right? Because both the pronoun and the adjective are describing a noun and therefore their case should be in sequence. They take the same case that the noun takes, right? So our task is to figure out the correct name for the noun and then put the um, adjective and the pronoun in the same case. And as a result, we are going to have be ready, I'm showing the correct answer. Покажи мені свою нову сукню. Покажи мені свою нову сукню. Again, we used uh, accusative case here. Why? Because, again, покажи мені що? Show me what? Again, we are dealing with a direct object. Therefore, we used accusative case. Another instance. Що ти будеш замовляти? Я візьму піца і чашка кава. Що ти будеш замовляти? What are you going to order? Я візьму, I will take, піца, a pizza, і, and, чашка кава, a cup of coffee. Okay, so we have three nouns here, but pay attention that чашка and кава sort of go one after the other, but they are in different brackets. And that means that the cases, that they will take different cases. Let's think about that. Take your time. And I'm showing you the correct answer. Я візьму піцу і чашку кави. Let's think about that. So, я візьму, I will take what? Again, direct objects, both the direct objects are in accusative. Znachidny vidminok. I will take what? Pizzu. Okay? And I will take what? Chashku. I will take pizza and I will take a cup. But then we are specifying a cup of what? Of coffee. And kava, we need to use in a genitive case. Why is that? Because in combinations like a cup of coffee, let's say a chashka kave, a glass of milk, chashka moloka, uh, a um, bowl of water, miska vody, right? In, in this something of something, we need to use a genitive case, right? So, ja vizmu pizzu i chashku kave two uh, nouns in accusative and one in genitive. Another instance as a continuation of that possible dialogue. Z cukor with sugar bez without. Ja lublu kava bez cukor. Ja lublu kava bez cukor without. I love coffee or I like coffee without sugar. Take your time. And the correct answer is z cukrom bez ja lublu kavu bez cukru. Okay, so z cukrom with sugar. In, um, so in Ukrainian, after the preposition z, if we have a word combination or a phrase with the preposition z, which we tr translate as with, with something, uh, uh, we use the noun in an uh, instrumental case. So, for instance, z cukrom with sugar, z molokom with milk, z vodoyu with water, mm, okay, uh, z zadovolenyam with pleasure, okay, we are doing something with someone else, like z sestroyu with sister, z bratom with brother, okay, all of the nouns should go in um, instrumental case or orudny vidminok, so z cukrom we used orudny. Bez, without. Ja lublu kavu, ja lublu szczo, oh, I didn't write um, the name of the case, but again, ja lublu kavu, ja lublu szczo, a direct object uh, of the verb I love, okay? Uh, so, we used accusative, obviously, znachidny vidminok, ja lublu szczo, ja lublu kavu. Bez cukru, without sugar. After preposition bez, meaning without, we use a noun in genitive case, okay? So, with something, 
instrumental case z cukrom, but without something genitive case. Bez cukru, bez vody, bez snihu, bez tepla, bez rozumienia, bez problem, etc., etc. Genitive case. Next one. Коли ти познайомилася з Павло? У липень минулий рік. Коли ти познайомилася з Павло? So, when did you meet Павло? У липень минулий рік. In July last year. Take your time to figure out the cases. And I'm giving you the correct answers. Коли ти познайомилася з Павлом? Again, with the um, verb познайомитися, we use preposition з. So, познайомитися з кимось, to introduce yourself or to meet with someone. That's how we uh, phrase it, that's how we word it in Ukrainian, right? Uh, so, and with preposition з, like we had z cukrom, with sugar, we had instrumental case. Same thing is happening with uh, Pavlo, z Pavlom. We use the masculine name Pavlo in instrumental case. And u um, means in July. So in Ukrainian, to say in some months, that something has happened in some months, we use locative case. U lipni in July, u veresni uh, in September, u žovtni in October, u berezni in March, etc., etc. With the names of the months, we are using um, a locative case and minulogo roku of the... Um, last year, right? Minulogo roku. So both uh, the adjective minuli and uh, rik, the noun year, should go in genitive case because of what, right? If we have a of phrase, of something, then we use genitive case. So yeah, коли ти познайомилася з Павлом у липні минулого року? If you wrote it down like that, then you were correct. And don't be discouraged if you make a mistake because we are just learning, right? So yeah. Uh, another instance. Куди можна покласти сумка? Поклади під стіл. Куди можна покласти сумка? Where can I put a bag? Поклади під стіл. Put it under the table. Okay? Take your time, think about it. Now let us see the correct answer. Куди можна покласти сумку? Поклади під стіл. So again, куди можна покласти сумку? Покласти що? To put what? A bag. Again, we are dealing with a direct object, that's why we used accusative. That's easy peasy. Next sentence. Поклади під стіл. Put it under the table. Поклади куди, uh, right? Our question is куди. We are asking for directions. So under the table. So after the preposition under, uh, the noun will go in an accusative case. But then again, we are asking for direction. The bag is not under the table yet, right? We are just intending to put it there, right? And we are asking where to we put it, right? So that, that's why we used... Uh, accusative case. Let's take a look at another instance, the tricky one now. <laughs> okay, so the kit sedit pit steel. The kit, where's the cat? Sedit pit steel, sitting under the table. Okay, so again we have pit and we have steel. But which case do we need to use now? Accusative again, or maybe some other one? Tricky, tricky assignment, tricky sentence. Um, let's see the correct answer. The kit, where's the cat? So, obviously, we are talking about the cat, so we used uh, a nominative case here. Sidit pit stolom, sitting under the table. Well, you will ask me, well, we had pit steel in the previous instance. Why we have pit stolom now? Why did we use uh, instrumental case? Why did we use orudni vidmino here after preposition pid? Hmm? 
Well, yeah, because we had two different situations here. In the first situation, the bag wasn't under the table yet. We were asking where can we put it and we were directed, right, to put it into the um, table. We, are, we were asking where to, right? The bag wasn't there yet. But we are we had an intention of putting it there. That's why we used accusative. But now the cat is there already. It is under the table already. That's why in that case we must use instrumental case or rudni vidminok. Okay, and that's the difference for you between pit steel and pit stolom. Pit steel. Not there yet. But we are heading there. Pit stolom already under the table. Okay. Next one. Звідки твоя родина? Моя родина з Болгарія. Звідки твоя родина? Where is your family from? Моя родина з Болгарія. My family is from Bulgaria. Take a moment. That's one is easy. Easy peasy. And the correct answer is Звідки твоя родина? Звідки твоя родина? Звідки твоя родина? Nominative case here. Obviously. And the answer, моя родина, називний, because that's, that's the uh, subject of our sentence, right? Моя родина. Who or what? Nominative case. З Болгарії. From Bulgaria. So, uh, з Болгарії. After the preposition з, meaning from we used genitive case, right? So here, because the preposition z has multiple meanings in Ukrainian, it can be z molokom, z cukrom, meaning with, and that's when we use uh, instrumental case, but it can also mean from z Bulgarii, z Ispanii, z Ukraini. In that case, we use genitive. Next instance, mi Улюблений жанр література фентезі. А яка твоя улюблена книга? Мій улюблений жанр література фентезі. So my favorite genre of literature is fantasy. А яка твоя улюблена книга? And what is your favorite book? Take your time, take a moment. And the correct answer is Mi ulubleni genre. Right? So mi ulubleni genre here is a subject of a sentence, so we use nominative um, case, obviously. But genre choho, genre of what? Right? Again, of phrase, of literature. Again, genitive case, right? Um, is fantasy. Again, we are naming a thing here um, and we are using the uh, uh, nominative case. A jaka tvoja ulublena kniha? And what is your favorite book? Again, nominative case. Nazivni vidminok. Next instance. Що робить tvoja sestra? Vona maluje u sebe v kimnata. Що робить твоя сестра? What is your sister doing? Вона малює у себе в кімната. She is drawing in her room. That's an easy one. So, uh, let's check what you answered. Що робить твоя сестра? What does your sister do? Again, твоя сестра, nominative case, because the sister here is a... Um, subject of the of a sentence вона малює she is drawing у себе в чому в кімнаті locative case or місцевий відмінок right we are specifying the location of our sister she is in her room right so um we used a uh, locative case в кімнаті another instance на полиця Було багато книжки та сувеніри. На полиця було багато книжки та сувеніри. So on the shelf there were many books and uh, souvenirs or like knickknacks, things like that. So yeah, take your time. 
I'm giving the answer. Napolizzi. Again, I forgot to write the case. So Napolizzi on what? Again, locative case, right? Where? The location. Napolizzi. Bolo bahato knizok. There were many books. Bahato choho knizok. Many of what? Of books. Genitive. Ta souvenirif. Again, genitive case. So there were many of what? Of books. Genitive case. And of souvenirs. I souveniriv. Ta souveniriv. Again, both um, nouns in genitive case. Another instance. Раніше ми жили в село, а зараз у велике місто. Раніше ми жили в село, а зараз у велике місто. So, before or earlier, we lived in a uh, village and now in a big city. Right? Велике місто, big city. Take your time. Press the pause if you need more time because I am given the correct answer. And the correct answer is Раніше ми жили в селі, а зараз у великому місті. Again, so first we lived in a village. Where? В чому? В селі. Locative case or місцевий відмінок. And now in a big city. У великому місті. Again, both the adjective and the noun should go in the same locative case. Why is that? Because the adjective is describing a noun. Therefore, it's related. They are related. They are connected together. That's why there should be sequence in cases. And also in number and the, uh, gender, etc. But we don't touch that. We are now talking about cases. Another instance. Для чого ти купив ще одні джинси? У тебе ж повна шафа одяг. Для чого ти купив ще одні джинси? So, what for or why did you buy yet another jeans? Like yet another pair of jeans. У тебе ж повна шафа одягу. You got a full, uh, full wardrobe of clothing right so how would we say that in ukrainian properly i'm giving the answer для чого ти купив ще одні джинси у тебе ж повна шафа одягу so для чого ти купив ще одні джинси what for did you buy yet another jeans? Kupiv sho. Kupiv jeansy. Again, that is direct object of the verb kupiv, right? Bought what? Yet another jeans. Shao ni jeansy. Utebesh povna shafa. So you have a full wardrobe. Utebesh povna shafa. So if we use this construction, utebe ye, or we omit ye, so we say utebe, meaning to have. Then the thing that, we, that this person has, we need to use in nominative case. So, u tebe povna shafa, nominative. But, shafa, povna shafa čoho, odjahu, okay? A full wardrobe of what? Of clothing, again, an of phrase. Therefore, uh, we used genitive, rodovi vidminok. Another instance. Diti povernulisa zi škola o druga hodina. Diti povernulisa zi škola o druga hodina. So, the children came back from school at two o'clock. Let's see. Diti, who? Diti. Again, the subject of the sentence, nominative case, easy. Povernulisa zi školi. Came back from where, right? From school. So, if we say from if we have preposition z that we translate as from, then the noun should be in genitive case. Z školy, from school, z universitetu, from the university, z roboty, from work, etc., etc. And then we specify in the time. I have a video on how to tell the time in Ukrainian if you are uh, interested. So I will also leave the link uh, in the description box. 
if you would like to see but to say at some time we use a mistake with me no locative case or Drugi hodini. Again, o hodini, we use mistake with me, no locative case, and druha uh, is a number which is used as an adjective. Grammatically, it's a number that works as an adjective that describes the noun hodina, right? So that's what we got. Dite povernulisa zi školy o drugi hodini. Another instance. Влітку ми з друзі хочемо поїхати в Іспанія. Влітку ми з друзі хочемо поїхати в Іспанія. So in the summer um, we with friends. That's how we say it. We don't say I and my friends. We say ми з друзями. We with friends. Хочемо поїхати в Іспанія. I think I ruined it by spoiling the correct answer uh, so yeah that's going to be easy one i'm showing the right so i'm showing the correct answer влітку ми з друзями хочемо поїхати в іспанію з друзями with friends again with someone that someone should be in instrumental case хочемо поїхати want to go where where to right to Spain, в Іспанію. Again, we use a знахідний, accusative, because we don't use locative here, because we aren't in Spain yet, but we are intending on going to Spain. That's why we use a знахідний, accusative. Коли повернеться твій брат? Через два тижні. Коли повернеться твій брат? Через два тижні. When is your brother coming back? In two weeks. Let's see the correct way to put this sentence, to phrase it. Коли повернеться твій брат? Again, твій брат, your brother here is a subject of a sentence, so a nominative case, obviously. Через два тижні, in two weeks. Через два... Чого? Два тижні. Genitive case again about the sequence of a, a number and a noun you can learn from one of my videos why do if we want to figure out why we use drodovi here genitive and not any other case another instance stepan zakinchit shkola cheres tri roky Stepan zakinchit shkola cheres tri roky. Stepan will finish the school or will graduate from school in three years. The correct answer is Stepan zakinchit shkolu cheres tri roky. So Stepan obviously nominative as a subject of a sentence, a masculine name. Zakinchit shcho zakinchit shkolu. Again, школу we put in знахідний відмінок or accusative case as a direct object of the uh, verb закінчити, right? To finish or to graduate. Через три роки in three years. Again, why did we use uh, родовий here? Because the number is три. Три роки, so the number три requires родовий відмінок. But if we had like через п'ять років, we would have через п'ять років. Okay? If we had one year, we would say через рік. Watch that video on numbers if you want to know more. Another instance. У середа ми з Сергій ходили в кіно. Фільм був не дуже цікавий. So, у середа ми з Сергій ходили в кіно. Фільм був не дуже цікавий. So, on Wednesday, uh, we with Сергій, so I and Сергій, basically, but that's how we say it in Ukraine. Ходили в кіно. Went to the cinema. Фільм був не дуже цікавий. The movie wasn't very interesting. Take your time. And the correct answer is... У середу ми з Сергієм ходили в кіно. Фільм був не дуже цікавий. Unfortunately, that is very unfortunate. So, у середу 
знахідний відмінок, uh, because that's how we uh, use the names of the days of the week in Ukrainian. У середу, у четвер, у вівторок, у п'ятницю, в неділю, etc., etc. Ми з Сергієм, we and Сергій, so with Сергій, an expression that demands us to use орудний відмінок, ходили в кіно, ходили куди? Ходили в кіно, знахідний відмінок, accusative, because direction, right? We went where to? Фільм. Був не дуже цікавий. So, the movie, фільм, називний відмінок, nominative case, because of the subject of a sentence. Another instance. Я хочу пофарбувати стіни у своя кімната у рожевий. Я хочу пофарбувати стіни у своя кімната у рожевий. So, I would like or I want to paint the walls in my room in pink. Paint the walls in pink color. Okay, so um, take a moment, think of the correct answer. And if you said, я хочу пофарбувати стіни у своїй кімнаті у рожевий, you were correct. So, я хочу пофарбувати стіни, пофарбувати що стіни, Accusative case, because the direct object of the verb пофарбувати, to paint, right? To paint what? To paint the walls. У своїй кімнаті. In my room. Where? Locative case, right? In what? In my room. Locative case. У своїй кімнаті. Both. Своя, the uh, possessive pronoun, and the room, a noun, singular, feminine noun, go in locative case. Another instance. Я пишаюся твій вчинок. Ти дуже смілива людина. Я пишаюся твій вчинок. I am proud of your um, deed or I am proud of what you did, right? Вчинок means action or deed, right? So I am proud. Я пишаюся твоїм вчинком. You are a very courageous person or you are a very brave person. Ти дуже смілива людина. Are you ready? Because I'm showing the answer. Я пишаюся твоїм вчинком. Ти дуже смілива людина. So again, я пишаюся чим твоїм вчинком. Here, твій вчинок is a direct object of the verb пишатися. However, there are certain verbs in Ukrainian that um, require that their um, direct object goes not in uh, accusative case but is in some other case so the verb pesha you said to be proud of something or of someone requires that their uh, direct object is should be an instrumental case well then that's how it goes we need to memorize that and there are many verbs like that in ukrainian so they are in the majority but they exist so ya pesha you said trim ya pesha you said voyim vchinkom so again possessive uh, Pronoun tvi and vchenok should be in instrumental case. And ty duže smiliva ljudina, you are a very um, courageous person. We are naming somebody, right? We are giving them the name of a courageous person. That's why we use nominative case. We are saying who they are. Okay, and that's it. That's it for today's lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you would like me to uh, practice cases with you more, do let me know. Don't hesitate and do let me know in the uh, comments and I will make more videos like that because I truly enjoy them. Also, don't forget to let me know your score. How did you do? How many mistakes you made? Because I, I would like to know. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you didn't, also do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that we can learn Ukrainian together and I will see you in my next video hopefully very soon. Bye!